But I first want to talk about the best non-college football playoff bowl game slated for this December and even into the new year. And I'm going to go like one through five on this. It's not really a list, but this is just kind of how I see it. Like, all right. So number one on the list for me, the one that I'm most excited to see outside of the semifinals is 13-0 Florida State versus 12-1 and Georgia in the Orange Bowl. So much to play for here. Now, if you're Florida State, you already feel some kind of way about the college football playoff, and you're already thinking, yeah, we're going to find a way to try to claim a national championship because we were really denied that opportunity to do that in the college football playoff. If you're Georgia, you're going, we still think that we're one of the four best teams in the sport. Maybe Alabama is one of them too. Maybe Georgia too. Maybe we kick out a Washington, right? Excuse me, Michigan too, not Georgia too. Maybe we kick out a Washington, right? You're not really sure who needs to go aside from maybe Alabama needs to stay. You're just going, hey, we de- we deserve that opportunity to be in the 14 playoff. I got a hard time wrapping my head around that one, but that might be how you feel if you are friendly to the dogs. Now, if you go and you stomp out Florida State, And let's say the national champion this year is not one that convincingly beats its opponent in the play in the semifinal and then the national championship game. You probably might look at Georgia as an AP voter or coaches poll voter or any one of the other NCAA designated selectors. And you might make Georgia number one. The same thing is true of Florida State, though. I think Florida State would have a very, very good case for a national championship share. If Florida State is able to knock off Georgia. Even if Georgia doesn't want to be there, right, which is something they like to say when they're not playing for in the playoff, right? They don't really show up. But they beat them with a Tate Rodemaker or a Keon Coleman, right? And knowing what Florida State had accomplished all this year, I have no problem seeing Florida State being ranked number one in the Associated Press poll, the coaches poll, or any other NCAA selector because – That would be what is owed to them. They won a Power 5 Conference Championship, and they finished the season 12-0, 13-0 going into the bowl season. Normally, that is not just a shoe-in to a 14 playoff. That's the team that wins the national championship. Now, had that been the case, even in the BCS era, we're going to have one of these three 13-0 programs not in a national championship game, whether it be Washington, Michigan, or Florida State. But I live in a place where I would like to see Florida State have that opportunity as an undefeated team. Now, if you go stop out Georgia, I don't think it's going to matter who wins the college football playoff national championship. I think Florida State is going to end up ranked number one in somebody's poll because they think that is what's right. And that's what's interesting and different about our sport is people that vote in polls or make rankings like myself have influence over what the history books will say. 2004, Auburn goes 12-0, and 0, right? They win a share of the national championship, but nobody thinks of that team as a national champion. And we see co-national championships a lot uh, throughout the history of the sport. What I find interesting is that in this year that we're having the last 14 playoff, precisely because we knew that this quarter thing could happen in that we might leave out somebody that needed to be in five power, five conferences, four spots, which was always stupid that that's what they decided to do, that we could still have a co-national champion. At a time when we ain't supposed to have no co-national champion. And I like chaos because chaos is fun to talk about and anarchy is fun to talk about. But it would be a great finger in the eye for Florida State to the college football playoff and really those that are root for those four teams in it to go and beat Georgia and dare anybody to say that they did not win the national championship in 2023. All right. Number two on this list of non-CFP bowl games I can't wait to see. 11-1 11-1 and one Ohio State versus 10-2 and two Missouri in the Cotton Bowl. I am terrifically intrigued by this game as well as the 10-2 and two Ole Miss versus 10-2 and two Penn State in the Peach Bowl. And I'm kind of grouping those together because it's basically the same thing for me. You get what I'm saying? I believe that we are not in a Power 5 anymore. I believe that come 2024, it's Power 2. We got two super conferences. We have a loaded Big 10 and we have a loaded SEC. And these teams represent the best of the rest, right? We got an Ohio State that has one loss to the number one ranked team in the country and many people's pick to win the national championship in Michigan. And we got Missouri, whose only losses are to, well, really great football teams, one of them being Georgia, who they pushed, right? I think that if you're Missouri and you got a guy like Eli Drinkwitz, who likes to talk his talk, 
and likes to tell everybody what they're doing in Columbia, Missouri, because we really don't really think about Missouri that way, that they're a really great football team. And one way for you to convince the nation that you are a really great football team is by beating one of the best known and best competitive programs in all its history, Ohio State. Beat them in a cotton bowl, right? This is also going to be an Ohio State that's going to be going with a new starting quarterback, whether it's Devin Brown or Lincoln Keenholz. And they're going to probably play this one without Marvin Harrison Jr. We'll see. We'll see, right? Because he's still undecided on even declaring for the NFL draft, which I find wild. But I'm going to do what you do. If the dude is slated to be a top 10 pick, five, top five pick, I just assume that he's going to go until he tells me otherwise. That said, they got dudes for which it should be an outstanding football game. However, I'm really curious as to how we're going to watch this because between Ohio State and Missouri and Ole Miss and Penn State, we're really going to draw some conclusions about what the SEC or what the Big Ten is about in 2023 and what it could be about in 2024. Like if you're Ole Miss and you're looking at Penn State, you're going, our losses are Georgia and Alabama. Your losses are Penn State, or excuse me, Penn State, are Michigan and Ohio State. That's the game, right, in the Peach Bowl, because as much as I think Oklahoma should have had one of these spots, I'm not going to turn down nothing but this turtleneck to get to watch any one of these four teams play against each other because we know the players. We know it's at stake. We also know that they had some tremendous change, right? We saw both coordinators are gone from Penn State, right? One got relieved of his duties, bringing in Andy Kotelnicki from Kansas, who I think is going to be an outstanding hire for them and great job. And you're going to have to find a new defensive coordinator with Manny Diaz becoming the new head coach at Duke. And again, Ole Miss, you're going to really put Lane Kiffin on front street by going, is this team really good enough to compete for an SEC title? And if they are, are they just that much better than Penn State? And is Penn State just as bad as people tend to think they are? I think they're basically on par. I think that's a pick them. And I'm very excited about it because it's more or less neutral, right? Pennsylvania versus Mississippi in the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. And then Ohio State, Missouri is just a clash of styles for me. And as far as styles being those cultures, right? Ohio State's culture is not like Missouri's culture. The SEC's culture is not like the Big Ten's culture. Very excited to see what happens in both of those. Number four on the list for me, Oklahoma State. Nine and four versus seven and five Texas A&M in the Texas Bowl. Now, on the front end, let me just acknowledge my regional BS on this one because I'm so excited about this because this is the Big 12 that I was raised about. I was raised watching Oklahoma State and Texas A&M play football. I also am an Oklahoma fan, which you know means I feel some kind of way about Oklahoma State, but I tend to root for Oklahoma teams when they play against other teams outside of the state. So, you know, Oklahoma State being that team. And then A&M who is just a wild story that continues to get wilder and more fun because now they don't have no Jimbo Fisher. Bobby Petrino is now the uh, offensive coordinator at Arkansas. We have no idea who's going to be the starting quarterback, and there's just this attrition going on at A&M as Mike Elko has continued to try to build this thing into something that we all respect, and I think a great way of getting started on that is hiring Colin Klein to be your offensive coordinator. But I really want to see Oklahoma State Put its stamp on this game because they are representing what we expect to be the rest of the Big 12, right? Uh, right now, I think you would be within your rights to call Oklahoma State one of the four best Big 12 teams in 2024, if not the best Big, team, uh, Big 12 team in 2024, depending on how you feel about Utah or Arizona, right? And then with AM, none of us really ride with AM outside of folks that claim them as their team. For one reason or another, they get on people's nerves. We have many reasons as to why, right? But for a program that believes that it should be competing for national championships, Oklahoma State is the kind of team you should stomp out. If you really believe that you should be operating like one of the best teams in the SEC and best teams in the country, this team should not present a challenge to you, right? This is a team that got stomped out by Texas, a team you're going to be directly compared to forever and ever. And you can't duck playing them next year. And that's the other reason why I'm really excited about this is AM probably would not schedule Oklahoma State, but AM didn't even schedule Texas. So if you want us to actually come to you with the level of respect that you demand, this is the game for you to do that in. And then the last game that I want to talk about is number uh is Oklahoma, right? 10 and 2, and Arizona 9 and 3 in the Alamo Bowl. I am not excited about the Sooners being a 10-win team 
play in the Alamo Bowl. That said, Washington, Texas played in this game, and they're basically in, they're not basically they're in the playoff now. This game is generally speaking been a really great one at Oklahoma playing Oregon in it a couple years ago. The last game that we actually got to see Bob Stoops on the sideline for, which was really fun, by the way, before Brent Venables took over permanently. But I think this is also a referendum on Oklahoma and the Big 12, as much as it is on what Arizona might be in the Big 12, too, coming what it's going to be in 2024. Oklahoma gets to say it's the only team to beat Texas. Texas playing the college football playoff. Texas won the Big 12 championship. Arizona really came out of nowhere. I mean, Randy Orton style, grabbing you by the neck, laying out in an RKO out of nowhere. I heard Jim Ross yelling in my ear. You know what I'm saying? JR was right there telling me about Arizona because the way that they were able to get on with folks in a loaded Pac-12 was inspiring. And they did it without a dude like Jaden DeLara leading the charge. Noah Fafiti came out of nowhere to put up absolute numbers. Like stopping out of Washington State, right? Given uh, Washington, one of the teams that we think is best, well, they had the best season they've had since 1991, gave them the what for and the what about. Everybody they played felt the pressure of what Arizona is capable of, and they're this close to being a 10-win team. I think with Jackson Arnold at quarterback, with Seth Luttrell and Joe John Finley calling the plays, you get Danny Stutzman returning, right? He announced his return on Monday to Oklahoma. This one has all the makings of being really, really fun and really, really good, not just because I'm an Oklahoma fan. That said, I am an Oklahoma fan, and I would like to see – the new SEC Oklahoma announced itself with a win over a new Big 12 Arizona. Those are my top five best non-college football playoff bowl, uh, not yet, bowl games. Let me know what yours are on the socials, and I'll be curious to see what you say. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.